Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome back to my channel. Um, first of all, forgive me for this croaky voice. I have been sick. It's gone on a little way, no, way too long. Um, but I didn't really want to lose the momentum of making videos. So I'm going to uh, do an update um, on, on the last video as well as uh, talk about something very timely. Uh, the the uh, number of activities that a person can do uh, when they're feeling under the weather. So the last time we got together, I was doing uh, a variation on the Gail Augustinelli idea of just taking random strips of paper and gluing them onto, in her case, adding machine tape. Well, I showed you another uh, several options, uh, header tape for pinch pleated curtains, um, a masking, painter's masking roll that had been cut down, a uh, teeny tiny little um, vintage roll that was only about an inch wide, some ugly ribbon, and so on. Anyway, I kept going, and I just wanted to show you how some of these things turned out. So this, this is just on... Uh, well, actually, these three are just on some um, cardstock uh, scrap material that needed to uh, be covered. I don't know what the ultimate end of these will be is, what the ultimate end will be, but uh, I, I just needed to keep going because I still had piles of stuff on my desk. This one, same color wave, same scraps, is done on that I think back in the day it used to be called pell on it was sort of a uh, an interfacing and this would have been the natural width that it came in so there are possibilities here and it's had you know probably a week or two to dry so um, it looks pretty stable to me but carry on so then this is sort of an up date on what I showed you last time. I talked about that, um, what is it, three-quarter inch hem fuser that we all have in our sewing baskets. So this is how cute that turned out. And you can see that I just used some contrasting, um, well, coordinating stitching, I guess, to make it, um, you know, to make it all tie together. This... Um, were, uh, this used up some of the digitals that I had printed. I don't even know where they came from. It was on that uh, painter's masking tape. Painter's masking paper. And I just zigzagged the, zigzagged the edges because, of course, paper to paper, you know, typically makes good adhesion. And this kind of has a packaging um, vintage product um, look to it. This one uh, was some digitals, and I did this on, uh, looks like more of that Pellon, perhaps. I'd shown you this one. This was on that uh, vintage adding machine roll. And uh, so by, by doing the, the messy stitching, I've stabilized it. I've hopefully caught any ends that maybe were not properly glued down. And of course, now that after I've shown you these, I can uh, roll them up to or hang them by their clip or whatever to take up less space. Anyway, I'll, I'll move along here. That was another one of those fabrics. This was more gauzy-like almost. Oh, this was the one that had the gooey side. Um... This was ugly ribbon. This was ugly ribbon. So now there's stability of those. I also showed you, maybe you can tell by looking at this, this six inch wide ribbon that was really gaudy. Like this is it on the back side. So you can imagine how um, bright and vibrant it was on the front side. So I cut this down just for ease of uh, maneuverability in the sewing machine. But what I did was I had some... Um, I, I think curtain panel that I glued down to the ribbon again just to knock back the color a bit so then I also had umpteen of these fairy flower fairy people 
these were a digital from uh, Paper Outpost that are probably two years old um, that I'd cut out and never done anything with. So basically what I did was I had these long strips, you know, of this ribbon, and I just glued, tacked down the, the, the paper with, you know, just a smidge of um, glue stick, and then messy stitched around. So I'll probably keep these intact for the time being. Um, there are, here are some singles. Now, again, whether when it, at, at the time of use, you know, I may choose to rough up the edges a bit or just leave them as is, but I just wanted you to see that. So enough of that. So basically, um, being sick is, well, it's no fun for one thing, but it also seemed to provide an excellent opportunity um, to do some some low key um, some low key crafting, and you know you can't just lie around all day. You can't sleep all day. So I had umpteen, and this this is probably the first thing that I did. Like I had umpteen of these strips that come with some paper kits. Uh, certainly most of these came from thrift stores. I never deliberately set out to buy any of this stuff. This is a sticker. Anyway, I had millions, it seemed, of these, and I thought, well, it's time to do something with them. So, um, a couple of ideas. I had some digitals printed out, and I just chose to add, well, in most cases, coordinating strips to edges. Again, are they ready to go signature pages? Perhaps. Um, I still haven't really gone hog wild in going ultra uh, clashy, ultra busy. Um, I really like this one. Well, I love that paper. Anyway, um, so that was some, uh, some ideas. Add a bit of embellishing to what were going to be journal pages. This is, I don't even know what this is, kind of has a linen-y finish to it, but rounded corners, so don't ask me what that is. Um, anyway, I had this, and I at first I thought, oh, I'll leave a space in between each one, and then I thought, oh, come on, you're not up to that. Um, make it life easier on yourself and just have the all the, the uh, strips butting up to each other. So you can see that it, it really almost has an ethnic look to it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I do know that this is a heck of a lot easier to store and handle and think about than millions of these. So that is one thing. Um, I also did um, some die cutting, and I won't pull them out because, as you know, it's a tangly mess. But uh, again, with pieces of cardstock that were kicking around. And a couple new dies that I purchased when we were in the States. Um, I got some of that done. Again, you're probably going to start remembering um, or recognizing some of these, these scraps because goodness knows they've been around a while. So I just did a bunch of paper snippets. Some of them, I would say, are pretty well done. Some need a focal point. I don't particularly like that staple showing. So, you know, again, a whole pile of these. Um, and I and I let the the um, uh, the scraps kind of dictate the shape. So that was a branding strip off a piece of cart um, scrapbooking paper. Um, I just like the monochromatic look of that, so I kept it all together. Anyway, we've all seen snippets, so you know what that looks like. This is just some kind of a random thing where I had all these loose bits, and I'm thinking, oh my, please let me end, you know, get oh, get this done. So is that kind of garish? Uh, perhaps. <laughs> but um, it may find a place. It may find a place. 
Um, another thing, whoops, another thing a person can do is some sewing. I love these black and white um, illustrations. And I put it on cards, on, um, what do you call it, craft paper, cardstock. And then just zigzagged around the edges. Now, will these go as they are? I don't know. Will they be belly bands? I don't know. Will they be bookmarks? I don't know. And it, frankly, at this point, it doesn't matter. I've, I've uh, done an extra step to them, and they're that much closer to completion. Um, another thing a person can do, of course, is, is cut and fussy cut. So these are, whoops, millions of botanic images out of um, a series of, out of uh, some uh, different books. There's a whole series. I think I showed you them in a haul video. Uh, time, I think they're time life books. So there's perennials and bulbs and annuals and, and cacti and you name it. So for some of the ones uh, that seemed a bit more, a bit easier and, and might felt up to it, I did some fussy cutting. So of course these, you know, are all clearly nicer than those. This needs to still be done. Um, but again, there's this whole wad of stuff that has been done. If I choose to fussy tear, great. If I choose to fussy cut, great. If I just choose to, to uh, antique it up a bit to knock back the brightness of the white, um, that's good too. Sometimes maybe all we can muster is some gluing and some inking. Same uh, images I showed you earlier. Um, just a different variation on those. Again, you know, sometimes, oh, this is more of the same. I've just backed them. So these could actually be little signature pages. You know, maybe this even makes up a booklet on its own. I don't know. But again, you know, one step. Oh, let's not have it upside down. One step closer to a completion. Another thing that I bought when we were in the States was, um, I mean, not this, uh, was um, some rubber stamps and some dies. So I've been wanting a postcard stamp, and voila, I have it. And um, so I'd done some of these on scrap pieces of paper. A uh, mushroom one, a um, dragonfly, and <coughs> excuse me, I don't know if you remember when I showed you those coffee filters that have been stuck on papers, you know, like sort of coffee filter shaped papers. Um, anyway, this was a new stencil, so I used the stencil uh, to do some. Because the texture of coffee filters is really quite nice. And I suppose I could have dyed them first. I still have more, so I could try that next time. But I was kind of gung-ho on trying out some of these new stamps. So stamps and stenciling is another thing that is pretty low-key, low-demand. And um, I also had a bunch of digitals printed out that were just sitting in file folders. Because in the beginning, when I first got into this, I thought, oh, if I buy a digital kit, I'd better print every damn piece of it. And not only one, but two of each page. So, um, you know, one to use and one to have as a reminder. Well, that's kind of kooky. Um, so high time to use some of them. So, because the back, because they'd just been printed on copy paper, the backs were white. So I sort of dribbled, uh, and I do mean dribbled because I couldn't find a mister, um, some tea on some of these. And then again, I used some some of those strips and the odd sentiment to um, I need to repair that tear to uh, take these to the next level. Now, with this, the, you can see that it, whatever happened with the T, oh, again, printed on an inkjet printer. So, um, 
Note to self, if you spray tea or anything on inkjet printed paper, the colors are likely going to bleed. Now that's great if that's what you want. Not so great if it doesn't, if it isn't. Now I might, I wonder if it's in the stuff I have ready to go here. Um, on some of it, it turned absolutely gorgeous. And you would think I'd used, you know, multi, um, uh, you know, like umpteen different um, sprays, but it was just tea and it activated the ink in different ways. These were some really uh, bright, bright blue envelopes. So I just, you know, just glued some stuff to them. These are, these are stickers. Um, so I bought, the, I got this package of variegated index cards. So again, using more of those strips, maps and this, whatever this is, scallop thing. Um, <laughs> weren't these 60s and 70s photos just so appealing? Anyway, I had a little green when I attached it to that. These, I think, were photo papers, and obviously the glossier side needs to be dealt with, although it took the, the coffee dyeing quite nicely. Um, the, the writing side would clearly be that one. So I added some borders to those. I had these long uh, strips that were, in fact, a quote. I attached them to some cards to get that out of my hair. Um... Oh, I'd use kids' book pages for some of these these opening things, but these aren't complete because obviously I have to cover that up to make it uh, usable as a journal journaling spot. <coughs> Excuse me. I um, these were more pages that I had, kind of thinking of them as um, possible signature pages. So this was just a half of a hanky that I sewed on uh, kind of willy-nilly. <laughs> Double the, turn back the top to make a little more, you know, stability to it. And that's now a signature with two pockets. Same sort of, this is, um, you know, obviously specialty printer, uh, yeah, printer paper. Oh, um, this was an odd shaped thing that I divided into fourths and I thought mm, this would be oops, this would be a good could make a good pocket and here is another so that this button creates that second pocket um, this time again because it was a weird shape I just um, spread it across the whole paper and of course when this gets sewn into a signature there are two three of those <coughs> excuse me um when this gets sewn into a signature it will automatically stabilize that and create uh, a tuck spot uh, pocket tuck spot on either side this one i sewed oh yeah i sewed this one uh, maybe you can see that into basically a square down each side. Um, I just turned that flap, that top part back, sewed it on with a button, um, just to help it, uh, just for more decoration. Um, this is a unique shape pocket. It came off a bib apron. Or pockets off an apron as well. I thought it kind of went with this guest book uh, paper. This is wallpaper. I don't even remember where this came from. Or maybe I have the roll somewhere. I added pockets. Again, um, this was a bit tricky because it had been cut on the bias, so I couldn't very well tear. And I, wherever there was a finished um, hem, or yeah, hem, I left that. But uh, with wallpaper, it, you know, obviously all that sewing is fine. Um, what do we have here? Oh, just kind of more of the same. Don't you love this garish <laughs> lime? Yeah, um, fluorescent green paper. 
uh, messy stitching around there. Maybe would have been more effective if it was in black. I don't know. Um, well, this was paper that I had dyed oh, probably a year or so ago. I had been passing around this, this whatever it is, this thing. It was a seam. I divided it up. I put one on each side, and I never have to touch that again. Thank you very much. Uh, and there was enough to do two pages. Again, the other half of that hanky. This time I sewed it down there as well. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, um, other thing I did. Electricity was I had um, deconstructed some kids' books, and we know that sometimes the words are uh, very appealing because they're a larger font. Um, depending on how elementary the book is, though, it might not be that useful <laughs> in terms of getting the. Um, I don't particularly care for these illustrations, so I didn't mind, um, you know, going through some of them and uh, cutting into them. And I will continue to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. So these, so these sorts of things are another byproduct of when you're when you're um, kind of your mind is willing, but your body can't do much more. Um, these oops, are the ones that come off branding strips. So, um, you know, okay, uh, break, it's time, breaking free. So that could be probably used, um, Sometimes there's a quote on there, so that can be used. My mind's eye. Again, whether these are used intact or whether they are cut apart or whether they're never used at all. I did get a handle on doing some of that. Um, I think I'm almost at the end here. Oh, the other thing I was I did, and I'll just this is probably where I'll end, is I began. Uh, yeah, I began removing the pages from this book. I intend to alter this and have it become um, kind of a, well, an altered, obviously an altered book, but an altered um, art journal. I think the pages are a size that is manageable. And, um, you know, it's in good shape. Perfect shape, kind of cute end papers. So what I did was pull out um, some images that, you know, either will be used in some format or other. You know, maybe for collage, maybe for envelope making, whatever. I salvaged, again, some words some teeny weeny images. So basically, I I kind of stripped down the book to its essential parts. Text that I might be able to use, images in all sizes, um, I didn't go through this small print to see if there was something there that was usable or not, but um, you know, this kind of, all this white space here is probably usable too as a backing paper uh, to back some cards. So there's that. Um, well, my lovelies, I think that that is all that I see within reach here. And I'm going to stop there. Simply be, oh, I don't want to stop there. I want to show you this. It's going to fit. No, I might have to. Well, I'll have to move it. So I kind of brainstormed. And can you tell I was playing with some felts, a.k.a. checking to see if they were dried up or not? Um, so here, and I'll move this slowly. So when you're under the under the weather, some options. You can fussy cut. 
You can cut out words. You can make faux envelopes. You can stamp stuff. You can sort stuff. You can glue stuff. You can back stuff. You can do snippet rolls. You can prep an, an altered book. You can deconstruct books. You can play with your colored pens. You can watch YouTube. Uh, you can launder. Oh, I didn't show you that. Um, I laundered some fabric and some lace pieces just to freshen up the scent. Oh, you can drink uh, ginger tea with honey. You can glue down bits of branding strips. You can send stencil stuff. How are we doing here for, can't really tell. Um, you can purge teeny tiny scraps. So my goodness, if it was less than about a square inch, I threw it out. You can take a nap. You can cough up a lung periodically. You can just think. You can use what you've printed, bought, scrounged, saved. You can play spelling bee on your phone. You can attach decorative strips to signature pages. You can messy stitch around flower fairies and ugly ribbon snippet rolls. And you can die cut stuff. So I guess the moral of the story is um, take care of yourself. But for a lot of us, taking care of ourselves means that even when we're under the weather, we don't want our hands or minds to be idle. So we will find things that um, that we can manage to do. Oh, I forgot to say emboss stuff. Emboss stuff. Oh, oh my God. Talk about, these were baby showers invitations for my grandson um did i mention he's 13 <laughs> been hanging on to this paper a pretty long time oh another thing i did thank you pam the paper outpost for this reminder am i going to be able to open this attaching shank buttons to paper clips that's another mindless uh, job that you can do while with Netflix in the background. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to have um, some tea and I'm going to encourage you to do what you can when you can because if it brings you joy, it will help in your healing process. And I think that's the best we can hope for. Anyway, thank you and see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.